Okay, so I'm going to go over the uh, the worksheet that um, that you guys were assigned, and it uh, looks like most of you did pretty good, but um, I really got to make make things clear because uh, I'm going to send the test out, and it's going to be pretty much just like this. Uh, can't see too much of a change or add it anymore, but I think all possible permutations are within um, the examples I give. The first one is going to be uh, the octane, I mean the combustion of the alkanes and uh, the, so on a test you'll be given, uh, write the word equation and the balance equation for, uh, for, for instance, combustion of propane. And so you have to write this out. Don't forget to do that because <clears throat> it's part of the problem. And then what you got to do is balance the final equation. So you have to start it with the initial equation, write everything out exactly the way it is propane uh, so these are the things you learn from our chemical formulas and names and I told you to guys to start by putting one in front of the alkane and now you have so the amount of uh, carbons you have so you're gonna start with the balance of carbons you could start with the hydrogen but it doesn't matter so I have one times three so there's three carbons over here so there has to be three over here so what times so we don't know this number. So what times one is three and obvious it's three, okay. And like I told you, usually the coefficient here, in fact, if it's the alkane, the coefficient is gonna be, I mean the, yeah, the coefficient is gonna be the subscript. Okay, so now you got the, the carbons. Now you gotta balance the hydrogens. Okay, so you don't have to worry about, so it's, so now just worry about the hydrogens. So you have a one here, and you have uh, forgot to put a three here. So you have three carbons from up here. Um, so now you're gonna count your hydrogen. So you now you have eight, one times eight, and what number times two is eight? Four. So you put a four here. All right. And again, I told you is that this number is always gonna be half of this if you're gonna deal with, deal with alkanes. So there's a little tricks as you go along through these. And then finally, the oxygens balance the oxygens, and so you have your, um, so you have your these three guys already. These, so you have your uh, alkane balance, you have your carbon dioxide, and your water balance. Now you got to balance your oxygens. Well, you got three times two is six. Okay, and you got four times one is four and you add them and then I told you to divide by two and put that number here and it's five okay and that'll work for alkanes okay now I'll give you just some, some things that you'll notice is, is that the alkanes well, anytime you start with a odd there will be a whole number and anytime you have an even number as a subscript there'll be a half that's if you put a one in front okay so just kind of tricks to look forward to I mean look 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 when you do these now remember the reason why this reaction takes place is because oxygen has a strong desire for electrons and what it does is it basically rips apart the carbon and hydrogen and looks for electrons and so the and which that reduces its hunger gets more negative and the alkane loses electrons in a sense and becomes reduced. And we'll see that when we talk about single replacement. So that's the key thing about this, these two, is not just to come up with balancing the equations, but actually explain why they take place. Okay, so now let's do the single replacement. Um, I really, really like to refer make sure you refer back to the previous ones I did with single replacements because this one ends up being pretty easy uh, I did several of them given different permutations to help you try to understand but I will try to work this out through I'm still explaining as much as I can so you have magnesium plus sodium sulfate replace the sodium become sodium and magnesium sulfate so notice the names stayed exactly the same. They just swap places. Okay. Now, so now we write down the chem initial chemical equation. 
Okay, the lone metal will always have a zero charge. So this number up here represents the charge it has, the relationship between the electrons and the protons. So that this atom has the same amount of protons, electrons, and you don't have to know that number, but it's equal. Okay, um, the sodium. So then sodium sulfate, again, here's the name, sodium sulfate, and sodium has a plus charge, sulfate has a negative, a two negative charge, so you have to crisscross, put a two here and a one here, and you got sodium sulfate. Okay, now sodium is all by itself and it gets a zero charge. So it changes charge, that's the key thing. It changes charge when it comes out, okay? That's because what it does, is we'll see it down here, is, is that it loses electrons. I mean, it, it loses electrons. I'm sorry, it gains electrons. And um, uh, in the magnesium, we'll lose electrons. So now magnesium sulfate is Mg2 plus. SO42 minus, and since they have the same charges, you don't have to, uh, to balance or crisscross. So usually I start out with the negative ion, but it's the same on both sides. There's one on both sides, so I'm going to start out with the one that's not the same on both sides, and that's sodium. So I have two sodiums. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I have two sodiums, so what I'm going to do is put a two here. Then I check through everything, and it's all set. Okay. All right. And now in terms of oxidation reduction, what I do is write down what happened. Magnesium starts with zero charge, goes to two plus, so that means it got more positive. And the way it became more positive is because it became less negative, all right? And the reason why it became less negative is because it lost electrons and it's oxidized. And remember, losing electrons, oxidized, gaining is reduced. Um, and then sodium goes from having a plus charge to zero. That means it gets less positive. It goes from plus to zero. Okay, zero is less positive than one plus. Okay, well, um, and it got that by getting more negative, and so it gained electrons. That should be tron, not trins. And it gets reduced. And then nothing happens to the sulfate. It's a spectator. Okay, so notice this. This is that these guys will always stay the same. Now, one thing to notice about all of these, you know, single and double replacement, nothing will happen to the polyatomic ions. They will stay exactly as they are. They'll just, they won't go, they won't lose their charges. There'll be no, they'll just stay exactly where they are. So you should just think of SO4 as a thing all by itself with the two minus charge, okay? So don't, don't get caught up in the fact that it has two atoms attached to it and all that. It's a thing, SO4, that has a two minus charge. So, um, and sodium, in this case, right here is sodium, and there's two of them, okay? All right, so, um, so I think that's, sometimes that's hard to grasp if you just try to, if you try to deconstruct this whole thing. So it's just really just constant, just leave it. That's the whole thing. If you look at everything we talk, thing we talked about polyatomic ions, they've always, there's nothing that happens to them. They stay as they are, okay? They don't lose charge, they don't gain charge. Um, there's more or less of them, okay, or stay the same. Uh, but they always, stay, they always stay the same. Sulfate is always gonna be sulfate. Right and um, and so forth. All right. So pay. So now let's do uh, the 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 acid with the um the metal. So hydrochloric acid, the calcium. So the word equation you have to change it. Uh, and I did finish it here, but this would be uh, hydrochloric acid plus calcium would give you calcium. Uh, chloride plus hydrogen. Okay. So I hope you listen to that. Because the names has changed. So this is, so it's going to be uh, 
So this is hydrogen chloride plus calcium produces calcium chloride and hydrogen. Okay, so the uh, initial chemical equation H plus Cl minus, so the, I changed it to its ionic form, then calcium and then calcium chloride. Okay, it's, there's calcium chloride. Okay, and then hydrogen is H2 and it has no charge. So this is not H2O, it's not water. It's H2 and the whole thing has no charge. Because of H2, no charge. So I'm going to balance like I usually do. I start with the negative ion. So I'm going to start here. So I have two Cl. So I'm going to come over here and put a two. All right. Um, now I check. Now I'm going to check to see my H's. I have two H's. I come over here and I have two H's. And that looks good. And everything's done. Fine. Okay, and if you notice calcium and what get oxidized or used, calcium loses electrons, gets more positive. The hydrogen um, gets less positive, gets reduced, and the chloride is the spectator. All right, a double replacement reaction, calcium hydroxide and sodium phosphate. Oh yeah, Go, going back to uh, single replacement, those reactions take place because of uh, something gets oxidized and reduced, and it's always metal. Uh, that gets oxidized or hydrogen. I mean, that gets uh, oxidized or reduced. Okay. All right. Um, double replacement reactions. Double replacement reactions take place. Uh, there's two types. The first type is precipitation, which we're dealing with here. And the reason why these take place is because you get a formation of a solid. All right. So let's write out the word equation. So it's calcium hydroxide plus sodium phosphate phosphide produces sodium hydroxide and calcium phosphide. Remember, hydroxide is not a um, that. Remember, this is a that this guy here is a tertiary ionic compound because uh, hydroxide is a polyatomic. Phosphide is not. This isn't the binary. Okay, so. The hydroxide is the only one that has I that is um, tertiary. All right, so now what we do is we just get their names. So this is calcium hydroxide. So calcium has two plus, hydroxide two, Na plus, P3 minus, crisscross charges, Na plus, OH minus. Uh, this, this is added to, not plus here. Um, plus, uh, yields uh, uh, calcium phosphide, crisscross charges. Uh, so I'm going to ba start balancing with the OH minus. Uh, you could you could start out with the phosphide. Okay, this one get, will get a little messy. So I'll put a two. So I have two over here. So I'll put over two over here. All right. Now what that does is you notice you have a three here. Now you have three sodiums and two sodiums. So what you have to do is get the sodiums right. So you need what's common between three and two is six. So I've fixed that. So I'm gonna put a two here to get six, and then six sodiums here. All right, and then I go ahead and try to fix whatever I need to fix. So I have, now I have two sodiums, um, two, I mean two times three, six sodiums. Uh, I have six hydroxides, so six. So what I need to do is put a three in front of the calcium to get the six hydroxides, and this is fine. Okay, so this one's kind of tough. Um, I'm gonna try to stay away from the ones that have, uh, where you have like this six, common six on both sides and when you're on the test. Um, okay, and there's no oxidation or reduction. Uh, just have to balance it. Okay, so now the acid base. So you have hydrogen, hydrochloric acid forms calcium hydroxide. Uh, so the we want the word equation. So what we what you want to do is you want to change the hydro hydrochloric acid to hydrogen chloride, and then you'll get swapping of name. The hydrogen goes to the hydroxide, 
and a calcium will go to the chloride and so you get calcium chloride plus hydrogen hydroxide which is water so on a test it's okay to write hydrogen hydroxide but also put water okay uh, so the initial chemical equation is H plus Cl minus Ca2 plus OH minus 2 okay then calcium chloride and water I like keep water as H plus OH minus, don't write H2O, because then it'll become tough to balance. So I'm going to start out with my hydroxides. Okay, you could start with chlorines, but I'm, I usually start with this. The ion has the most, uh, negative ion that has the most stuff. So I have uh, two hydroxides, so I'm going to put a two here. So I have two hydrogens, and I come over here, and I see that I need to put a two. And I got that. Okay, and notice I have two CLs and I'm fine. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple extra just just because um I guess they're never enough, okay? So we'll go over that. So iron phosphate plus calcium sulfide produces iron sulfide and calcium phosphate so this is a double replacement reaction and this is a precipitation okay you notice there are two ionic compounds whenever you have two ionic compounds it's going to be double replacement um and if neither of them are acid then um, it's going to be precipitation so here's your starting equation just check it through it's exactly what you expect iron phosphate is this calcium sulfide is this iron sulfide is this and calcium phosphate is this all right and then what you do is i'm going to start balancing with uh the phosphates i i like to start out with the substance that has the negative ion that has the most stuff going on so po4 2 is more stuff than s3 so usually that works, okay, so I need to have a two, need two phosphates, so I'm gonna put a two right here. Now I have two irons, and it's already fixed, okay, so I'm done. All right, so the only thing I need to do then is, uh, I think I, just, I need uh, three calciums and three sulfides, it doesn't matter. So I'll simply put a three here and I'm all taken care of. Again, double replacement reactions they create because they form uh, a solid. The reason why um, acid-base reactions take place is because they form water. Okay, and um, do this one. Aluminum plus magnesium oxide produces magnesium and aluminum oxide. Notice this the metal swap. So this is a single replacement reaction. Okay. Um, so aluminum, no, no charge on when it's by itself. Magnesium oxide. Magnesium now is all by, all by itself, and so it has zero charge. And aluminum high oxide, Al3+. Plus. Okay, that's from its, its memorized charge in O2 minus, so it's crisscross charges, and there you go. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is start out with um, I have three oxygen, so I'm gonna put a three here. So I usually start with a negative ion. Okay, uh, that's the key thing for, I usually, it doesn't, usually, it doesn't always work, but I usually start with the single replacements that I start with negative ion. So I need to have three oxygen, so I put a three here. And it turns out when I, if I have a three here, I also need three magnesium, so I put a three. And um, then I have to fix my aluminums. Okay, and I put a two here. Okay, so, um, so, you know, that this is it. Um, I'm. Uh, you just need to study. Uh, I will. The test will probably look a lot. Lo well, definitely will look a lot like your, um, your homework you did. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that works out. I'll send it out, and I'll send it out oh, next couple of days. Hopefully, um, give it a go. 
I, I really appreciate, you know, if your first glance, not to use, uh, not to use notes when you're figuring out your chemical formulas. Okay, uh, just remember phosphate and phosphide are different. Uh, if sulfate and sulfide are different, uh, sodium is not s sulfur. Uh, there's those five guys or six guys I told you to memorize and I might give you again but iron three plus a copper two plus aluminum three plus uh, magnesium two plus and lead two plus um, know your polyatomics no crisscross charge single replacement it's, it's uh, Anytime you have a polyatomic, it doesn't change, okay? The charge doesn't change. It will never participate in uh, gaining or losing electrons. Uh, the only things will gain or lose electrons will be metals or hydrogens. It's in single replacement reactions. Uh, double replacement reactions, every, all, the, all the charges stay the same. Uh, when you balance single and double replacement reactions, you usually start out with negative ion. And for double replacement, I usually start with negative ions that has the most subscripts, but it doesn't always work. And like I told you, I'm going to try to stay with stay away from uh, uh, ones that have you know six uh, a comment of six on both sides, because that shows up a lot. So you know, I'll just study it, and I want to move on. And you notice that um, I put up. Uh, the uh, PowerPoints for the next material uh, and there's worksheets but I really do, I'm not I don't want you to hand them in but I would like you to make sure that you uh, try to do them and ask questions if you need to uh, and we'll get more into that and I would like to have the test for that the week of June 7 July 6 so uh, make sure you're studying it, okay? All right.